Hey, you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do not skip ahead. Do not skip ahead. That beautiful theme music will start shortly. This is not an ad read. It's a heartfelt statement from us here at the Confused Breakfast Podcast. We are coming up our, on our 100th episode and two-year anniversary, and it's been an absolutely amazing ride. This whole operation takes up a lot of our time, but all of you make it so unbelievably worthwhile. This podcast doesn't continue to exist without your support. Simple acts like commenting on our social media posts and clicking the share icon to send an episode directly to a friend who loves the movie topic is the easiest way to support us. Taking that... St- Taking that support a step further, nearly 200 of you are pledging to us on Patreon and are receiving perks like voting on upcoming movies, a brand new private Discord server, Whoa. and yeah. bonus weekly audio content. Thanks so much to everyone who's already joined. If you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash confusedbreakfast. And perhaps the most two-way support that you can possibly provide to this podcast is by directly purchasing from our amazing sponsors. If you go to Felix Gray, Cedar Ridge, and Pepper Joe's and use our promo codes, not only do you receive an amazing product in return, but you are also directly proving to that company that the Confused Breakfast is amazing and that they should continue to sponsor this podcast. This podcast will always remain free to listen to, but if you want to help us out, those are the ways. We are unbelievably thankful for all of you. So, how about we start the show? Thank you. Mm. Ooh, here's a prop. Damn it. <laughs> Wrong button. <laughs> it's Wednesday morning. It's early. Way too early for you. You're probably sitting in traffic like me. Why not have your coffee and bacon with the confused breakfast boys? Good morning, boys. Damn, dang it. <laughs> Uh, I'm just gonna let that ride. <laughs> uh, that's our new. <laughs> Do I need to play the intro music or not? I think I I'm not sure. I think I'm just gonna leave it for one time only. <laughs> one time only. That is Damn our buddy. Damn, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> that's our buddy Chris from New Jersey. He was inspired by Wayne's World and he wanted to hook us up with the intro. So <laughs> maybe we'll alternate back and forth. Yeah, <laughs> I don't amazing. know. It could take the cake for me. <laughs> well, hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast <laughs> Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video? rental store as a kid yes, sir. the excitement of walking down the aisles browsing the names in the artwork and finally picking out the movie you were going to take home with you sure it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era and streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your couch but there was something truly special about making that trip praying to joe boo that they have your favorite movie and grabbing it from the shelf to take it home and watch <laughs> On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte, and joining me as always, one guy who looks like the wild thing, Vaughn, and another who has worse knees than Jake Taylor, Sean Pryor and AJ Vince. How the heck are you? Yeah, we'll leave it up to you to decide. <laughs> we'll, we'll let you guys decide. But for, we, for one of the first times in the in this show's history, it's clear to you yeah. and I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> we it's pretty dang close if, and clear. If you're, if you're a fan of the show, you know who's got uh, bad knees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's AJ. Yeah. <laughs> you were a catcher at some point in your you, life, weren't yeah. you? Yeah, well, wait a second. <laughs> Take it easy, Mike. Catcher okay. of <laughs> gr- great. <laughs> you, <right>. Yep. <laughs> well, boys, it is time to introduce today's movie. On this episode, we discuss one of the most beloved baseball movies of all time, leaving it pretty high in the rankings of sports movies all time. Ooh. A movie that spawned the careers of many of our favorite actors and launched the franchise into not one, but two sequels, believe it or not. Can you believe it? There's there's a new one that we're not even going to mention it. Yeah. Uh, a movie that taught us that the only thing that trumps athletic talent is hatred for an evil owner. We're, of course, <laughs> talking about 1989's Major League. Oh, feels good. Feel about Chris. Yo, boo. Joe Boo. Fuck you, Joe Boo. <laughs> Fuck you, Joe Boo. And for those looking to find this movie, as of the recording on this episode, uh, at the end of June 2022, I think you got to buy this one. I, I couldn't find it anywhere. I yeah. couldn't get. I couldn't find it anywhere. You've got it. Red Boxer you, Prime. You got it. You got to yeah. pay that 3.99. Yep. Rip nope. off. <laughs> no, dude. I, two 2.99. I'm telling you guys, save your dollar. Watch it in standard. Standard deaf. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it you'll, it'll make for a nice nostalgic experience for you. It's very nice. I'm even serious. like uh, even like the subtitles, if yeah. you want to put those on there, they're kind of faded too. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of charming. Yep. You know? I like it. Sort of charming. You know what I mean? 
Well, in order to properly dissect and review this movie with a modern eye, we must first discuss it with pure nostalgia. Mm. AJ, let's start with you. Tell us about the first time you saw this movie and what your nostalgic rating is. So, there at our movie theater in Mount Pleasant, okay, we had... I don't know why they never changed some of these posters that just were in the window <laughs> or like of like there's like a movie store kind of connected to it and whatnot. And they never, ever changed the posters. And one of those posters was a major league poster with the baseball, with the mohawk yeah. and stuff. It's like John Mayer at Guitar Center. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it never goes away. It's the Dragon Force guy still in, yeah. in guitar. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, it was it was for some odd reason. Like that poster is just ingrained yep. in me because I walked past it every time I went there. I had never, I had never seen the movie at that point. Of course, I didn't see the movie until a, on Comedy Central when I kept seeing like these these commercials keep replaying like over and over again. The Wild Thing, <laughs> Major League tonight, Comedy Central after dark. I don't know. It's like whatever. <laughs> So they just recently bought the rights to yeah, it. Yeah, they, they, let's <laughs> let's pump it. They got the syndication. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, that that was honestly it. And I remember thinking, like, ah, it's whatever. I don't get it. And sure, it's kind of funny. And I like Charlie Sheen, so I'd watch it. And then I just wait for Charlie Sheen to be on screen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So honestly, back in the day, I was probably like a. a a uh, five point one. Mm. Five point one. Yeah. Sean, what about you, man? Hey, man, somebody failed me uh, when I was a kid. No. I had never seen this until we did a thing for our our brother podcast. What are, who are they again? Who's our brother podcast? Oh, uh, is that uh, uh, Buzz in the Tower? Oh, okay, oh. Buzz in the Tower. We did a little guest spot on their thing. That's and, right. Uh, it was recasting this movie. That's ah. when I first watched it. So maybe a year ago. Wow. Um, I'm honestly not gonna give it a rating. I, it's kind of me not seeing it i feel like we've so. had a lot of not seeing sean movies lately <laughs> <laughs> i yeah. remember i remember the the poster like vividly in the in the vhs box and it kind of scared me as a kid i was like what is is this I like a, <laughs> is this like a naked gun thing i don't know what's going on here but yeah I, naked yeah. gun scared you but. i don't know <laughs> yeah leslie nielsen is weird uh very rubbery uh yeah so I, i'm not gonna give it a rating because i think uh my uh, rating that i will give it okay. after will okay. be more apt okay well, I absolutely love this movie. I was a big fan of baseball in my younger years. So I th in fact, I think maybe Patreon-only exclusive episode, we talk about baseball today. I think that'd be a nice nice topic because I've got some funny stories about that. But yeah. this movie was, like, edgy and cool. And, and the TV edit that I watched so many times had me absolutely confused when I saw the real version of it. I was like, uh, where did all these F-bombs come right. from? Like, the R rating in all of its glory was one of the coolest moments of my life after having watched this as a as a PG yeah. uh, rated version or whatever. So, I'm, you know, I'm an eight. I'm an eight nostalgically Dang. on this one because I, I did really enjoy this movie. I thought it was awesome. So if you want to look at just me and AK, or me and AK. AK. <laughs> Jeez, Step man. up. This is a rap rap name. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it just changes it by one letter. <laughs> I'm just actually trying to find our ratings. There we go. So we would be collectively a 6.55 nostalgically. Mm, okay. You know, that's not great, uh, especially in the realm of, of, of all the very high rated movies we've had. Uh, that's going to take us uh, around the 51st, 51st Dates Breakfast Club Tremors area. Oh, wow. Nostalgic. And again, I don't put much. I, I mean, like it, the, our, our nostalgia rating makes no sense to me. Yeah. yeah. It's just like <laughs> it's all, all over the place. Oh, Princess Bride is the worst movie we saw as a child. And Blank Check is the best. <laughs> 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 so that doesn't make much sense. But we'll come back and we'll give that modern day rating. But before we dive into all the important details of the movie, I want to show some love for our newest sponsor, Pepper Joe. Yeah. We get a lot of thanks from everybody like because we tell them about Cedar Ridge or we tell them to get Felix Grey glasses, but the crowd of people are loving, loving Pepper Joe's. They're so happy that we turned them on to it. You guys must love hot sauce as much as we do. In case you didn't hear or are still on the fence about trying it, you have to order some spicy snacks from this amazing company. Not only are the products truly incredible, but the variety is out of this world. From salsas and jerkies, sauces and spices and more, you're sure to find the spicy snack you're craving. They can help you grow hotter too with their pepper seeds, live plants, and mm -hmm. fresh peppers. They're delivering them straight to your door. Ghost, Carolina Reaper, Habanero, Scorpion, Cayenne, Jalapeno, and more from mild to extreme. They have you covered. They hooked us up with a huge box of incredible products. Do you have those for us, AJ? I do. I've got Are them they right the, here. Get 
them in the refrigerator while I'm talking about it. Okay. <laughs> Go get them. <laughs> Go get they, it. They, they hooked us up with a bunch of stuff for these episodes. This is, uh, we've got some habanero ketchup and ghost pepper mustard. Wait, what? Which they're thinking baseball movie. You know what I mean? You're going to put that on a hot dog. Yeah, you spice are. Spice. <laughs> Here comes AJ. You're going to spice wow, up that. where'd those uh, come from? Spice up that hot dog at the ballpark. I recently made some chicken wings and yeah, used the ghost best. pepper barbecue. Yeah. Uh, and I used the garlic, ha- garlic habanero. It was awesome. Super cool stuff. Uh, we know you guys will find some stuff you love in their super broad selection of spicy goodness. If you're ready to spice up your life, head to pepperjoes.com. New customers get 10% off their first order with promo code CONFUSED. Confused. Go to pepperjoes.com, load that card up with tons of hot and spicy stuff, and do it because it's your first time. You get 10% off. Promo code CONFUSED. Go do it. So I'm, good. I'm happy and annoyed at that sponsor because it's the one sponsor, besides Cedar Ridge, I guess, that makes my mouth water. <laughs> And I'm hungry as hell. Yeah. <laughs> Especially now that you brought those. You're out. thinking about a hot dog right now, are you? Yeah, I'm thinking about dude. a hot dog. I'm thinking about <laughs> let's grill some destroying dogs my this. mouth. Dude, yeah. we could do that. Let's do that. <laughs> all right. So next, it is time to learn all the pertinent and important details of the movie. Sean, what do you got for us, man? I got produced by Irby Smith, Joe Roth, and Chris Cheezer. <laughs> I like that one. I can tell. Written by <laughs> David S. Ward, music by James Newton Howard, cinematography by Ronaldo Villalobos. I got it. I got it. That's well done. I thought I'd trip me up. Wouldn't you? Very yeah. surprising. Edited by Dennis M. Hill and directed by David S. Ward. Cast Tom Berenger, Charlie Sheen, Corbin Burnson, Margaret Witten, James Gammon, Rene Russo, Wesley Snipes, Charles Cyphers, Chelsea Ross, Dennis Haysbert, and Bob Euchre. Writer-director David Ward first came up with the idea of the film because he was an actual huge fan of the Cleveland Indians. With the team being a disappointment for a while, Ward said the only way he was going to see the Indians win is if he created his own story in which the team put together a winning season. He realized it would have to be a comedy because no one would take it seriously. <laughs> so if you want to, if you're Kinda a fan like of rookie a team, of the year, right, with the Cubs, like exactly. the Cubs were terrible. Yeah. That. If you're a fan of a team, all you got to do is make up your own story and get it on screen. So. Okay. Look out for my Philadelphia Flyers movie coming out here soon. All right. The <laughs> <laughs> it's a horror movie. <laughs> yeah. Cause, yeah, it's, it's a real a slasher. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, well, two minutes. Yeah, I hate Get it. out of here. <laughs> the film was mostly shot in Milwaukee because the production was unable to work around the Cleveland Browns schedule while they practiced and conducted preseason games in the Indian Stadium. Some exterior scenes were shot in Cleveland. A lot of like the opening scenes obviously yeah. were like all in Cleveland, but most of like the in stadium shots were in that Brewers uh, stadium uh, because they couldn't use their own, which is <laughs> it seems kind of blasphemy, you know? Like it does, yeah. especially like for writer director David Ward, he's just like, oh, really? It's gotta be in my it's, stadium. I, I'm making a movie though, so I guess <laughs> we have to we have to do this, huh? <laughs> uh, apparently, Sheen took steroids in preparation for the role. <laughs> Uh, okay, get those guns ready, baby. Yeah, I mean, he's not only on the drug Charlie Sheen, he's on steroids, a real drug. Um, apparently, like, he would go to bars, uh, like, on on off days and stuff like that around Milwaukee, and people would make fun of him because of the hair Rightfully he had. Rightfully so, yeah, yeah. And he would get roided out and beat the shit out <laughs> of him. Oh, my God. At Tiger least, blood, baby. At least attempt to, yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, on a budget of eleven million, the film debuted at number one at the box office, taking in a worldwide total of seventy-five million dollars. Wow, that's crazy. That's what I got so far. Seventy-five million dollars, huh? The uh, the interesting thing about this is that the in the storyline they say that they were moving to Miami, uh, yeah. and four years after this movie came out, Miami actually got an expansion team. Yeah. That would go on to win the World Series after just five seasons. Ironically, they beat a heavily favored Cleveland Indians. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is a curse because Cle- Cleveland Indians have not won since whatever it was, 48. They still have not won. Really? Okay. I think LeBron and um, the Cavaliers were the only team to actually win a, a championship in Cleveland. Well, yeah, you got you got to have one. You got us. And I do want to at least point out that I I did get an English major in college, and okay. my specialty was na- Native American literature. Okay. And I do want to point out that I am going to use the Cleveland Indian name for this entire movie. Uh, I was questioning that in my head too, but they're called the Guardians now. They but, are. But okay. for this movie, we're going to call it. We're going to say the Indians. I I think that the Indians are probably the most laughable, uh, like 
racist, it's t- it, most it's, blatant. It's bad. <laughs> it is so bad, and I'm glad they yeah. changed it. And I know there's a lot of people that are it's like, who cares? But yeah. it's like, we literally yeah. stole the land from these people, and then we're like, yeah, let's look, make fun of them. Let's make them look like a cartoon. <laughs> yeah. So like I, I'm I'm on board with that like I know it's sports and whatever but uh, for for yeah. reference we're gonna call them the Indians during the show yeah, yeah. the yeah. Cleveland Native Americans right. is what we're gonna call them <laughs> yes so come come at me bro <laughs> uh, hey quick mention before we get the next segment major announcement we're gonna let you guys know first our Patreon members have heard this. Uh, but you guys are going to know um, that we have a live podcast that we are going to do. Come see it's our true. meat suits in, in the flesh. <laughs> We've been wanting to do this forever. Our two-year anniversary, 100th episode, we're going to be reviewing Roadhouse in front <laughs> yeah. of a live Road. studio audience <laughs> Yeah, but at Cedar Ridge in Swisher, Iowa on Thursday, September 29th. Tickets are very limited. We haven't even put them on sale yet. Patreon got first dibs. We're going to let you guys also now have second dibs on that before we go public at all. So shoot us a message on any social media platform or email us at confusedbreakfast at gmail.com to reserve a spot. We've got, it's like a $20 ticket, but we're going to put on a crazy fun show for you. There's going to be drinks, whiskey, food. We've even got hotel room blocks if you're coming from out of town. So uh, hit Mm -hmm. us up. Uh, That is Thursday, September 29th in Swisher, Iowa. And it's going to be a little different. I know we're on YouTube and everything, but we're going to be doing uh, it's good. It's a live show. We're not just going to be sitting there or anything like that. It's going to be no. it's going to be fun. So come on out and uh, see our faces and our bodies do moves. <laughs> Sexy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So up next, we have the one, the only AJ. He does the research for us and hooks us up with ratings and reviews from critics alike. What do you got, man? Let's hear you it, know where we got to go to the tomato, tomato meter. <laughs> Gross. Cannot wait to do that in a room full of people. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one thing I'm excited for. We're excited for that. <laughs> How about uh, we revert that splat to a fresh? Oh. Certified fresh, 83% wow. major league. Dude, that Damn. is uh, that's top 20 of the nearly 70 movies we've done. That is tied with Big Lebowski. We're almost out wow. of movies. <laughs> We're almost, We're almost done. Movies. <laughs> <laughs> we've almost done all the movies, yeah, guys. There's none left. <laughs> um. Audiences definitely agreed um, at 84% okay, on nice. that. And then you have IMDb came in at a 7.2. IMDb. Just, they're just the most normal score. Why do, we, why do we even turn to that anymore? I don't know. I mean, I know I want to hear it every time, but it's just I, like <laughs> every movie ever made is a 7. No, no, no. Listen, according to our list, there is a variation from 8.7 all the way down to 5.3. So I'm just okay. saying yeah. that is like middle of the pack. That is tied with Goldeneye and Tremors. According to the IMDb, I would watch this <laughs> triple with, feature, dude. I would a uh, triple feature. I would watch this with Tremors. For I would sure. too. Uh, I think I would All watch right. it with that. <laughs> Sounds like a good not gold, not not gold. <laughs> yeah, not, no, I, I'll never watch that movie again. <laughs> it's just <laughs> mad that we had to watch it. Pure disdain. Um, uh, well, we always like to hear from uh, from the critics, and I'm going to start from the bottom, move on up. Uh, Hal Henson at the Washington Post gave this a 40 out of a hundy. Major League is shamelessly formulaic. At the beginning, when it uses Randy Newman's ironic ode to Cleveland, City of Light, City of Magic, the movie has a lovely tone and briefly you feel a surge of anticipation. (laughs) As if the people making it might actually have an original point of view or or some feel for the game. All hope is dashed, though, early on when you realize that they are cannibalizing every other baseball movie. <laughs> okay. Fair enough, Hal. Uh, <laughs> this is from uh, film threat Brad Laidman, uh, October 10th, 2000. Hey, Brad. Brad. I just liked his first, uh, his first take on this. This is actually a pretty, pretty decent rating. Uh, he said, there's nothing wrong with a grade A prime-aged Angus beef but sometimes all you really want is a McDouble, uh, is a McDonald's hamburger. Major oh, League okay. is the quarter pounder with cheese of baseball movies. Royale with cheese. <laughs> Royale with cheese. <laughs> There's nothing original about it. All the characters are stolen from other books or movies. But it's under. But it understands the longing of a starved baseball town and manages to wring out plenty of laughs from familiar situations. That's that's my rating at the end too. So I don't have. Are to we go. done? Then? Yeah, We're just done, right? Go, okay. Yeah. Okay. See you later, man. Cool. Hey, have a good night, <laughs> Spoiler man. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I liked Dave. Dave Care. Uh, we've had him on the show before. He's a regular guest I love here. The show. Love yep. Him. Love uh, him. 
You know him, you love him. From the Chicago Tribune. Major League is a movie that knows what it's up to. It skims along uh, agreeable surfaces, expertly, ba- expertly balancing its comedy with melodrama and fulfilling expectations right on schedule. As a movie, it's a superior industrial product. How about some, uh, some fun? Two out of ten. Mm. Way overrated. Yeah. This is in 2020. Yeah. God damn what, it. What month? Uh, May. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Just I, I remember that, too. Yeah, I was there. I was there. Uh, <laughs> I was mad about everything, too. I don't remember. Give it anything. another watch. <laughs> Boring. I can't believe that they wasted so much time and money on something that barely rises to a made-for-TV movie level. Yikes. Okay. Great. Um, I'm just going to go real positive here, guys. 10 out of 10. Great movie. And I love how these are like, these seem really, really personal to these people. Great movie, Bruce Strebinger. Mm-hmm. Is he saying that uh, to Bruce? Who or doesn't, who doesn't like sports movies. Okay. okay. <laughs> he just wanted that guy to know. I didn't know if he was somebody like of note, but <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue who you're talking about. <laughs> Great Bruce. movie, Bruce. Thanks for the recommendation. Wait, what was the name again? Bruce, Bruce Strebinger. Stree- Strebinger. S T R. I'm not going to spell okay. it. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking it up. <laughs> We're good. 10 nope. out of 10. Uh, nobody on there. Nobody. Okay. <laughs> IMDb, that guy. He's like, wow, he's my uh, Facebook friend. <laughs> That's my dad. 10 out of 10. This is entitled Baseball. Yes. <laughs> yep. Also, t- uh, 2020. <laughs> You're supposed to go, it's <laughs> called Baseball. 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 <laughs> you have to start <laughs> your sins off that way. Too. Baseball. Great baseball movie. Some really funny bits, but I can't think of any offhand. <laughs> <laughs> why, why review this <laughs> then? Why is he doing anything? I just need to add it. You know, I, w- I want to pump up the numbers a little bit. I don't need to say anything. <laughs> what, was, what was the rating? 10 out of 10? 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> this is 10 out of 10. God, it's really funny, but I, I can't really recall anything about it. That's like it. writing a rating. <laughs> That's like going on the Confused Breakfast and giving us a five star and being like, I actually haven't listened to this podcast, uh, but yeah. my friend really likes it. I, I don't uh, know. Preemptive. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right, I'll give you one last they one. They paid me to like this podcast. <laughs> uh, we this do, a, by the way, if anyone yes, out there yes, wants to get everybody. paid to like us. Yep, we'll, we'll drop you some dollars. Shoot us your Venmo. Uh, eight out of 10, entitled Home Run, of nice. course. Home run. <laughs> oh, this is such a late 80s movie. Newman song, Sheen, Behringer, Snipes, all brought together in a goofy sports comedy that doesn't really make any sense, is racist, sexist, and all sorts of insensitive. This is probably a really generic movie, but I find I really enjoy it. It's just the sweet spot of mindless comedy that I can pop on and either pay attention to or have an on in the background and get a few chuckles each time I watch it. This isn't an, ex- an exceptional movie, but it's fun. Worth checking out if it happens to be on somewhere. Can't say it's worth buying or paying for, but Same it's thing. a fun time when it's on. <laughs> Eight out of ten. <laughs> if I walk into a room and it's halfway in, okay. You're going you're gonna to do the, the dad park up like... <laughs> <laughs> That's a really... Don't... Maybe lean against the back <laughs> yeah. of the couch. Maybe kind of like... <laughs> Coming in yeah. from like mowing or yeah, weed I was eating. just gonna say, like, <laughs> taking a break from mowing, <laughs> pull, pulling your New Balances off. Going, what is that? Oh, I've seen this. <laughs> is that Tom Berenger? Wow. Because <laughs> Dad's recognized <laughs> Tom Berenger. Is that Tom, not. <laughs> is that Tom Berenger? Boy, where is he? Been? Oh, wow. Cool. All right. Oh man. <laughs> well, thanks, AJ. You bet. Before before we get started on a scene by scene breakdown of this amazing movie, that's me. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Cedar Ridge Distillery. Located in Swisher, Iowa, the home of our future live podcast. Yeah. It's be amazing. Cedar Ridge is one of the fastest growing whiskey companies in America and was named Distillery of the Year in 2017. They're the number one bourbon in the entire state of Iowa for two years running and have won countless awards for their quality and taste, including a gold medal just recently at the New York International Spirits Competition. We are huge fans of their delicious products, including the quintessential American single malt, their whiskey collaboration with Slipknot, and of course, the flagship bourbon, which we've been drinking nearly every episode for more than a year, as evident uh, by yeah. all of the empty bottles in this studio. <laughs> Quite sad, actually. <laughs> if you want to talk, I wonder if it. we get like a free bottle if we turn all of them in. Yeah, so five cents per <laughs> bottle. We do a deposit. I think we'd get there. <laughs> uh, actually, the other day too, I bought uh, a straight rye a bottle of straight rye. Mm. 
Sometimes rye gives you that, like, it kind of flips the script a little bit. If you've been doing the bourbon for a while, rye's just like, ooh. I like a little rye. Yeah, I like a little rye, too. Every now and again, my guy. Uh, I'm, good, I'm confused. I'm <laughs> really upset right now. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> if you're in Iowa or around the Midwest, you can likely find some at your favorite local establishments. If you want to give us a shot, but you're elsewhere in the country, you can order online at cedarridgewhiskey.com. Trust us. If you or someone in your life loves whiskey, order some now. You will not be disappointed. Please enjoy responsibly. CedarRidgeWhiskey.com for everything you could ever need. Cannot wait for our live podcast there. You're going to love it. CedarRidgeWhiskey.com. That's CedarRidgeWhiskey.com. CedarRidgeWhiskey.com. Just a bit outside. <laughs> Just a bit outside. <laughs> damn dang it. <laughs> damn dang it. Well, boys, what do you say we compile a ragtag team of lovable misfits and come together on the field to spite the hot but evil owner of our baseball team? <laughs> there will be plenty of bumps in the road on and off the field, but if we work together and with the help of some Vagisil, we can win back the fans. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> I, guess there's only thing, I guess there's only one thing left to do. Yeah. Win the whole fucking, fucking thing. thing. Yeah. Here we go. Podcast championship is ours. <laughs> we would win a podcast championship. <laughs> For drinking. For drinking. Ah, all right. <laughs> all right. So Rachel Phelps, a former Las Vegas showgirl, has inherited the Cleveland Indians baseball team from her deceased husband. She wants to move the team to Miami so she compiles the worst staff and roster possible. All players and coaches are notified to report to spring training. At spring training, we meet the team and the issues quickly arise with their skill and camaraderie. I um I so one of the reviewers said that it was like uh, they tried to get you emotionally involved right away with the with the Randy Newman song. Mm -hmm. I was scared. Really? <laughs> like, That's a creepy song. Seemed man. like a dreary. It just like opening for you. I mean, I we live in the Midwest, so some of those shots <laughs> looked a little familiar. Yeah. You know, and uh, I I just I don't know. Did anybody else? Creep? Does anyone actually like <laughs> Randy Newman? Randy Newman. <laughs> like Randy Newman. <laughs> I just, I just can't imagine anyone ever being like, "Hey, what do you want to listen to tonight? Let's pop on that Randy, Randy Newman album." Yeah. Uh, oh, hey, did it. you get that new Randy Newman album? Did you get that? The one with the Cleveland song? The, oh, one, yeah. the one where he sings songs about every town oh, in Cleveland? America? Yeah, <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's half good. The other half, I hate those cities. <laughs> I mean, I we, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have a friend in me. True, it's, but yeah, Pixar's do we really like that song? Mm, you're right. I mean, it works well with. I, I think it, that works well me. with Toy Story. This doesn't. For me, it, worked it well. Were, I, I kind of like the intro. It's it. I like it, but the, yeah. Okay. Normally, I would I would totally rag on this intro because <laughs> it's like they the play the town. whole goddamn song. But like, I, it makes me invested in it. Like you're seeing the blue collarness of this town. You're seeing the like the kids playing baseball, and then it pans out to like the factories. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he just has every song based just, off his Toy Story thing. It's just <laughs> you got a town in me. me. <laughs> You've a got a town in me. <laughs> Isn't that a Family Guy episode where he just yeah, walks around yeah. and, just, and he just like talks about what's happening in the yeah, room? Yeah, That's basically what he's doing. It's it's great because you know, except for Randy Newman just constantly singing about what he sees. Uh, oh. <laughs> Fat man with <laughs> his kids and dog. <laughs> Joe <Joby laughs> from, from the, the morning, morning fog. <laughs> hey there, Rover. Come on over. We're going to do the whole bit. I can't wait. <laughs> uh, so I thought you guys tuned in to hear a major league <laughs> podcast. We're Randy just reviewing Newman. that one episode of Family Guy. Dude, oh. it is. It just feels like, it's like, hey, Randy That's Newman, will you write a song about Cleveland? Blue collar town. <laughs> Big river. From Apple pie. With the Apple pie. <laughs> they got a baseball. Oh, this is what the movie's about. They got <laughs> a baseball, baseball team. team. <laughs> Okay, so all Randy uh, Newman ragging aside, okay, okay. I actually love this introduction. Yeah, okay. I'm a yeah. big fan of it. I love it so much. There's something like very warm and like cozy about it. It is. And like it does invite you into like I I think of Cleveland. I've been to Cleveland before. I do think Cleveland of it like Cleveland rocks. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> It does feel like a very like a, a work in town, like a blue yes. collar, kind of like a, a larger version of Cedar Rapids, Completely. where we live, Completely. pretty much, right? So feels very much like that, and uh, I really did enjoy it, and I love all the '80s vibes. I felt like I'm getting an introduction to like an '80s sitcom yeah. halfway yeah. through, you know, <laughs> yeah. and I'm just like, God, I love this so much. It feels good. It feels really it's good. like it's like the Roseanne intro, like it yeah, just, yeah, anything blue collar. 
that was my life growing up. Like, I want it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want it. I want it. Inject it. Randy Newman, a piano, and a tenor sax. Just <laughs> Maybe a harmonica. Maybe a harmonica <laughs> in there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, I mean, so her whole strategy. Uh, sorry, what's her name again? Her uh, name is Rachel Rachel. Rachel. Phelps. Rachel Phelps. Her whole strategy is to build the worst team that she can so they can move to Miami. Yes. And, like, I get that, but... That is a strategy for teams to like get higher draft picks and everything like that. Like to finish last, yeah. you get first pick. Yeah. I think, right? I mean, in hockey at least, isn't that? Like I think it's a, the think same it's, way. I think it's for most sports. Yeah. Okay, so, so I mean, it's is not she a banking strategy? on that? Because then, because once she then gets to Miami, she's got great draft picks. Yeah, she's, that's true. Is that what she's hoping for? She's coming. Yeah, I mean, so maybe maybe it's. I mean, yeah, it sounds very dastardly the way they put it and her saying, I'm trying to get out of this contract and, like, hit the loophole. But at the same time, you're right. It's like, yeah, it seems like a valid strategy for if, you know. You're if you're really, already bad. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just her whole demeanor, I yeah. guess. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, there's some selfishness behind it where she yeah. just wants to be on in Miami. She and just be wants to yeah. tan every day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oiling. Lotion. Oil. So, Lotioning. so Ted Lasso ripped this off, right? <laughs> okay. Ted, ha, have you guys seen Ted Lasso? I haven't watched it. I haven't. Oh, it's so it's sorry. one of the best shows in recent memory. I hear, um, I hear the good things. Yeah, yeah. Ted Lasso essentially rips this off. Basically, here's Ted Lasso: a woman owner wants the team to fail due to her hatred for her husband, hires bad players and staff, team does bad, but eventually pulls together. But I do think Ted Lasso knows it. Because the, at the end of season one, um, <clears throat> Ted Lasso's in the office. Spoilers. And he, and he goes, yeah, he goes, <laughs> we're just going to have to win the whole fucking thing. Like, Does he, he say says that? that at the end of season one, oh. just like they do in this one. So I'm pretty it's sure it's an that. aware. It's not uh, the same thing, but it's kind of the same thing. It's got to be aware. So like they're aware said. of it. It's a, exactly. it's a good like what plot a outline, or like a good... Yeah. Um, a good like plot device. Yes. Like it, you want you automatically root for the underdogs. I, I oh, feel yeah. so it, you're automatically introduced to underdogs and someone who wants them to fail right off the bat. <laughs> All yeah. right. It works for this one. It, I have <laughs> said a lot. It works it really works, <laughs> works for this I like one. It. Well done. Um, <laughs> also that opening scene ha uh, had um, it showed the department store Higbees. That's and right. Oh, Higbees. Higbees was the same department store in the Christmas story. Yes, that's did, it. Did that Christmas cool? story happen in Cleveland? I, I I think it was. You know, right? it, I guess. it very well could have. Well, I don't think it I thought it was said? Chicago, but maybe it was Cleveland. I don't, did it ever say? It's a know. Midwest town. I someone feel go like. back oh, and listen. Yeah, I'm, I'm, someone go back and listen. To <laughs> We're episode. gonna listen to our episode real quick. <laughs> Everybody, stop what you're doing right now. <laughs> uh, no, I Christmas story took place in Indiana, is what it says. So okay. I mean, whatever. I mean, I'm sure on. that's just a generalization of yeah. the area. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, you know, Cleveland, Indiana. Exactly. Um. Uh, I, I do like the line. There's like when she rolls in and everything. I do really like the line of a couple of these guys are dead. <laughs> then cross them off the list. Then cross and then, them off. <laughs> then, they, then they do the hard cut. And I just, I like that. This is like, that's it. I really do appreciate that because you don't get that very often in 80s movies. I feel like those good hard cutaways, yeah. Yeah. cold stops, you know, like, yeah, I really like that. The editing is, is the joke. Yeah, the exactly. Hard, the hard cut. Yeah. How much do you guys love James Gammon as Lou Brown? Oh, my God. His voice is amazing. Like, it's <laughs> I, like I'm, I'm waiting for AJ to just. Yeah, do I it. know. I know. There's Morgan Freeman, <laughs> which he can do <laughs> shockingly. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but then there's, I think, Lou like, Brown. I kind a lot of people. If you could have someone narrate your life, you're thinking like Morgan Freeman. Yeah, like, mm. I'm almost going James Gammon. James Gammon or or Bob Euchre. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. Probably <laughs> Bob Euchre for me because I haven't I haven't lived like a I haven't rode horses for a living. I don't you know I don't break horses for a living. I yeah. guess it sounds like like a hard man. Yeah, would narr would would be narrated by Bob Euchre. He yeah. should have been wearing a cowboy hat instead of a baseball 100%. hat this whole time, probably. But yeah, he. He is, and my favorite thing that he does in this whole thing is when you first see him. It's like, <laughs> Lou, how'd you like to come down and coach the Cleveland Indians? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, what do you mean you don't know? It's like, 
I don't know. <laughs> Let me <laughs> give you a call mm-hmm. back. Yeah. I got a fella coming in to talk about some white, white walls. walls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you think do you think that that is a tire chain uh store that Shanice owns from oh. Uncle Buck? I got to help so. Do you think Uncle Buck and Lou Brown somehow live in the same universe of like yes. Sh- Shanice and Lou Brown in tire stores? It's a Kobolowski tower. T- <laughs> yeah. Tires. He says Kobolowski like tire t- store or something, yeah. but it's Kobol. It's going to be bought out by Kobolowski. Kobolowski, yes. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I love that. That's why he's that's why he's okay with going and doing this. He's like, well, we're going to get bought out anyways. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I absolutely love I think this movie has some of the most perfectly placed F bombs like through strategically throughout this movie. Some of the best deliverances of F bombs. I know we I, am I so know glad. a lot of time our Instagram goes nuts every once in a while about the the best fuck you oh, in yeah. history. But this is just the use of the word fucking. Yeah. Uh one of the many ones is when Vaughn shows up to practice he goes, look at this fucking guy. <laughs> like fucking like guy. the way they say it is Dude, so amazing to me. I was gonna say, especially uh there's a point later I think in the next scene uh when we get there that I will make this point okay. again. But this has some of the best fuck you delivery. Like it's the most intense or most um, natural, like, natural, like honest. Yes, honest is the word I would use of the word. Because fuck, it, fuck there's you a fucking, difference between yeah. really meaning that word when you say it and yeah. just saying it because you're reading it on a piece of paper. Or something. Yeah, like, yeah. There's a difference in that. Right. Uh, when Vaughn does show up, he's like making this cool entrance on the bike. Yeah. And they do this handshake and they hit the up down th- like pound, but then they go to pound and they miss. I don't yeah. know if anybody caught that? <laughs> uh-uh. They definitely miss their pound when Vaughn's trying to look super cool on the motorcycle. So I just thought people should know that. Did you guys notice that cutaway? That Which weird one? cutaway when Vaughn it's it's when so Wesley Snipes rolls up. Uh, by the way, in his car that has white walls on it. Yeah. <laughs> was he selling them to fucking he probably was. was he selling the Will, Willie Mays Hayes or what? Might have been, man. <laughs> I I love that. And it's like I I looked that up. He looks very rich rolling up in there yeah. too, right? And turns out that car is actually a Beetle, but they <laughs> they had a body kit that was a Bentley body kit that you could have put onto a Beetle. Pimp <laughs> my ride showed up it to his basically house. Basically, <laughs> exhibit showed up and said, "Yo, dog, we're gonna put a Bentley." Yo, dog, I hear you like baseball. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you like white walls. We're gonna we're gonna get the Pirelli white walls. Like I don't. Like, like, <laughs> And I know this ish. great place. They're getting bought out by Kobolowski here soon, so we've got to get them for cheap. Yeah. <laughs> ish is going to hit you with that. That great <laughs> too. Never mind. Uh, but anyways, he backs out, and he, he's like saying hi, and I love that they're, they're just like, yeah, parking lot's over there, Willie. <laughs> just so we don't even know this guy. We don't know why he showed up. He wasn't on the list. He backs out, and he kind of pushed. The car goes behind. Oh, you're right. And there's this like cut. And then he drives away, and apparently he's like flagging, he's waving his like handkerchief, he's going, Doo-loo. 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 and like that was a cue for the motorcycle. For the motorcycle, uh, but I'm like, why? You're why right. make the cutaway thing? I don't know. It was really weird. I saw weird. that today. It backs up out of sight, but then it just—it's like they didn't line it up perfectly. Exactly. Then it looks like he pulls forward, but it was a totally different yeah, shot. Yeah, because there's trees <laughs> blowing in the background. It's just like. <laughs> You can tell it's moving. <laughs> yeah, so. Wesley Snipes is so fucking happy in this movie. So Dude, I know. he makes he makes me happy. His performance in this movie. Uh, it, like you you see him in like Blade. I, I see him in Blade. Right. <laughs> that's why it's like we where, where I think of him. <laughs> but like his comedic chops in like this and um, the uh, Eddie Murphy movie on Netflix. I, f- I forget. It, it's based off of Dolomite. Dolomite is my name. Okay. He's super fucking funny yeah. in that as well. His comedic chops are extremely underrated, and yeah, he's he's super good in this. Um, I I really like him. I really like Tom Berenger in this movie <sighs> too. I I don't. I mean, Tom Berenger is like definitely an '80s actor kind of. I don't know, not heartthrob, but like that gentleman. Yeah. Oh yeah, the gentleman of the '80s and '90s. No, I see it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I re- yeah. I remember thinking. People be like, "Oh, Tom Berenger." I was like, Psh. "Yeah." And then, like this time around, I'm like, "Tom Berenger is very good looking. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a very attractive man. Yeah, and like, I like, know, like a the guy next door type. Guy. Yeah, you just think you know, of like, him in like Platoon or Sniper, yeah. and then like I think he's just doing military movies for like three bucks an hour. <laughs> yeah, you know? nowadays anyway. Yeah, but uh, no, he's super good looking in this, and and also 
very comedic, uh, um, well timed comedically. I, yeah, I like yeah. him a lot. In this. I, ag- I agree. Hit that button for me. Oh no! Oh, wait, wait. The prop or the punchable prop. face? Okay. Uh, Ooh, hey. here's a prop. <laughs> Nailed it. God damn it. Takate shirt that he's wearing. I want That's it. a pretty cool that shirt. Is I want a that good Takate one. shirt. Oh, but man. I, what if I want it? What if I want it? I did it first. All right, then. No, I saw it first. Sean, here's the problem with that: is I even wrote down what your prop would be. Yeah. You have to wear Wild Things glasses with the skull on it. The crossbones. Oh, the cro- skull and crossbones on the bridge of his, and he's got like knives down the side of it. Like, why would you not want those? It's true. You would look awesome. In I'm those. not in high school anymore. But you'd look so cool. You would look so cool. <laughs> he's like, I can't wear those. He's he's so sincere. He's he looks so cool. What do you <laughs> throw in? Throw in something else. And then, and then you can have the Ducati shirt. No, I don't want the shirt. Oh, I well, one. fuck it. I, I'm going to go. I, I have one. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Fine. Uh, no. It, uh, I want the Joe Boo statue. I want to I start want a new voodoo religion, and nice. I want that Joe Boo statue with the, with the cigarette coming out of his mouth. Nice. Just going, glue. You, you want it because he pours him shots every night. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. We just changed that rum to Cedar Ridge. No exactly. big deal. Not, I want it in our studio. <laughs> it's fine. I want Joe Boo statue <laughs> right behind me. We'll see if Felix Gray can get you some of those uh, some of those specs. With Hit like me up. Crossbones. Let's do, uh, let's do some collabs. Yeah. Uh, I want I want the golf cart thing that he no. drives. <laughs> the Cleveland Indians like bullpen yeah. cart. Yeah, yeah. I want yeah. the bullpen I, cart, uh, man. Because we do live in Swisher, <laughs> yeah. Iowa, here where there's golf carts everywhere. You, can you drive were driving it. around with that. I would, oh man, how dope would that be? That'd be so sick. <laughs> have so you great. seen that? Have you seen that guy in like the Cleveland Indians <laughs> golf cart from the eighties? <laughs> yeah, I hear he's like a podcast. Guy. Yeah, That's how he has his money. Is yeah. he even a fan of them? No, not at all. He hates baseball. He hates baseball. He's got bad knees. <laughs> <laughs> no, he hates it. I think that's I think that's the ironic part of it. <laughs> He's got a podcast where they just give him props. Yeah, very <laughs> interesting guy. Very he, funny. He comes from podcast money. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh, uh, anybody else you want to talk to before we move on? On this uh, part? just uh, uh, um, Joe Boo guy. Sorry, what's his name? Serrano. Serrano, Serrano, yes. Pablo Serrano. I like. I love. He's like hats for bats. He's like. I, I, I just. I love. I, that's uh, also our new charity. So uh, hats we. For bats. You uh, you give us uh, your your hats and we will give them to bats. To bats. Like actual flying, Fly, n- flying night bats. creatures. That's right. And uh, I think it'd be fun to see some bats with some ball caps on. Yeah, I think. I think during. I think during winter you're gonna see toys for tots. You're yeah. gonna see, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> coats for kids, and then you're gonna see hats for bats right next to it. So we'll, we'll <laughs> have a bin right a... outside of the studio. <laughs> see if you just want to drop drop your hats and we'll give them to some bats if in need. That is <laughs> that is Dennis Haysbert, the fucking all state guy. All state guy. It Can you believe it? It blows my mind. And every he says time. fuck in this movie. <laughs> he does. And he very poorly portrays a Cuban. A, a like Cuban guy? just a very. Like I don't have any issues with like the like one of the reviewers was like racist. Like I don't really have many issues with this movie. It's like they're not making fun of anyone. They're no. just kind of stereotyping a few. The, different some yeah. of the characters are making fun of, but that's that's them. That's on them. Yeah, you know, it's not the filmmakers. I don't think. And yeah, I think you're right. I don't think there's really I, a problem with it. If <laughs> anything, just, they're stereotype like they're like, oh yeah, baseball players. We want baseball players. Yeah. We need and and we need baseball a very ster- superstitious guy. Yeah, and he's and, from Cuba. And we need a a very um, diverse group. Yeah, yeah like yeah. you, if if it's gonna be baseball, it's very true. So you've got to have a very diverse group. <laughs> so I, good. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so scene two, at the end of a grueling training and warm-up games, the final team is set, and they return to Cleveland to begin the season. Taylor takes Vaughn and Hayes out to dinner, but comes across his ex-girlfriend, Lynn, and wants to win her back. The Indians' new season starts off poorly, and they lose a few games with low attendance. Jake crashes a dinner party. I got to say that the red cards in the lockers gave me such anxiety. They did. Every every time they opened their lockers, and they were hoping there wasn't a red card there, is like me maybe like a year ago looking at my bank account and being like, oh my God. <laughs> hope there's not a red tag I there. hope it's not red and then a negative sign <laughs> for like $400 or something like that. I, it was like legitimately yeah. freaking me out. Wesley Snipes, like when he does that <laughs> final look in and he's just dodging around his locker, <laughs> I had, I did have anxiety like that whole time. I'm just like, just look. 
please just look. <laughs> and, and young me, young me watching this, like, yeah, the snake did it. The snake, there was one in there, but the snake made it go away. It's like, <laughs> why are you just fucking, just open it. Like, yeah, whatever, you're, you're wasting time now. You're yeah. just wasting time. <laughs> you're you're just wasting prolonging time. You're the not going to change this. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I open my bank, I put my code in. I'm just like, okay, here we go. Here we go. Just look, just fucking look. Just, just look, just look. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I like a failure now. Oh. He he sees he sees Serrano doing it with like that that bull snake or what yeah. that big snake, and then <laughs> he's the got a little snake. gardener snake. Gardener snake. He kisses <laughs> it. He's like, oh, <laughs> I but, like little gardener snake. I, I, little cuties. Um. So the other thing. Oh wow, Sean. Excuse me. This this is what I was going to bring up as like some of the best use of those f bombs is when Charlie Sheen <laughs> and Corbin Bur- Burstein Bernstein yeah. Burstein um that they get into it i mean it is it feels so genuine yeah and i really do think that it, there <laughs> must have been some animosity Roided going on this. Charlie Sheen. Yeah. yeah yeah it could have been he is just dropping it like and so is so is corbin but like they're going at each other and yeah. it is intense it i seems loved pretty it. heated you're yeah. right <laughs> yeah he tackles him really well like everything it's cool the, it is pretty funny. They go to that little dinner, and uh, you, you can tell that he's got. He's like, I feel like a feel like a lawyer, or feel like a, ba- a banker, banker or something. Like. And you know that he basically said you have to wear a collar and a tie. So he had a, a leather jacket for the collar and a tie that wasn't even attached. He's and he's just, just like, he I doesn't feel... doesn't look like a banker. He looks like he's ordered by like a bachelorette party. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just like I don't understand. I, I I just obviously that's the joke, but it just makes me laugh so hard he's like i feel like a banker he's just got a tie tied around his <laughs> neck <laughs> that's the one so thing awkward. making you feel like a banker is a tie around yeah the neck. it's like yeah it's the dress code you gotta have a tie on so he just put a tie on his neck we wear caps and sleeves at this level this league <laughs> yeah. Yeah. uh and like so they're at the dinner party did it's, it's bothered me since i started re-watching this like how do you call how do you call a number from the place you're already in and have it like ring and then you're on two different phones in the same on the same line. How do you do that? It's the Ferris Bueller effect. Man. When a stranger calls, <sighs> yeah, it's, it's, it's the, calling from inside the house. Never have two lines in the house. No, no, it's not you, even today. You can never do that. That way, because then the killer just is like, "Oh, dang it, they don't have two lines," and they just leave. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> uh, but no, it's the Ferris Bueller effect. You know, they just like go to another line. Yeah, no big deal. You know, Abe hey, Froman. <laughs> no. <anyway. laughs> uh, but I, I always thought this was. I thought this is super weird. I was like, boy, he's. He's persistent. Is that endearing? <laughs> Is it? Back in the day, it sure I, was, dude. I, yeah, I guess they they want you to chase them. <laughs> <laughs> they love it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bit weird, you know. Like it's like the main character of the movie was like, no, you're not happy. You're only happy when you're with me. Yeah, you know, it's like, well, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. It's up to you. Wow, but isn't it fucked up how that Ins- works though? Insistent. I mean, like, as a kid, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. go get her. Yeah. Yeah. She's very that guy. pretty. Yeah. Screw like, that guy. Yeah. She's very pretty. You deserve her. Yeah. You that get... other guy just must be an asshole <laughs> because it's not Tom Berenger. Exactly. Like... <laughs> if you're not Tom Berenger, you're an asshole. <laughs> He's probably a banker. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> attorney. A lawyer. That's yeah. Attorney. Worse. <laughs> attorney. Uh, even worse. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think it was one of Rene Russo's first movies is what I read. Was it? And uh, I love Rene Russo. She's I think, pretty good. Like, not even maybe eight. Nine years after this, she wins an Oscar. No, yeah, no. That was her first movie. Okay, yep. for not uh, an Oscar. For Lethal Weapon Three. That's that, it. that yes. was a couple years yes. later. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I, get, I get her and Kim Basinger mixed up. I don't know why, <laughs> but uh, no, she's great in this, and um, yeah, and, and in Lethal Weapon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> three, 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 and four. three and four, three bro. and four, dude. Yep, I'm telling you. So <laughs> let's let's start up a, a Bob Euchre Harry Doyle appreciation thread, please. You know, I, I never knew this because I, I, you know, I mean, you just don't. The internet doesn't exist back in the day. But he's a real life announcer. He mm-hmm, is the yeah. announcer for the Milwaukee Brewers since 1971. He still is. He's the best character in this movie. I'm pretty I sure. Think, I think you're right. Yeah. And, and like I, I heard the majority of it was literally just improv. Yeah. Of I, him just going. David David Ward, I mean, the director, uh, just he liked him from his Miller Lite commercials that he yeah, did back in the day. Yeah. And so he's just like, I just want that guy. And then he just happens to commentate for the Brewers as well. You know, it's it's 
just a cool thing. It was I mean, probably pretty cool for him to to show up and say things that he's always wanted to say. Yeah, true. You know, like <laughs> like say okay, no like now I can listen. actually say some things I've been wanting to say on air live. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I I mean, how would you? How on earth would you would you give him lines? The yeah. guy who's yeah. been doing it and uh, long enough already. Like, how are you going to give him lines? No, you you bring him in. You tell him, hey, do you, Bob? Yeah. And that's it. Here's what's happening hey, in the game. Go yep. for it. I yep. don't know if this is the movie like where this kind of thing comes from, but I love like a passive aggressive <laughs> announcer for like a <laughs> shitty team. Like you see it in Goon. I like yep. that guy a lot oh, yeah. too. Like he's like after the national anthem, he's like, that was borderline treason. <laughs> 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 I love that. Moving line. along. Yeah. I uh, mean, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just say, I also like that. Um, this is the second movie, which we haven't talked about yet, but that there's a second announcer who says nothing yes. pretty nothing. much yes happy gilmore's the same way same way <laughs> same exact way that guy has zero lines he has one line and it's mm, <laughs> checks paper <laughs> that's it and this guy's basically the same exact thing he even has a point where bob Uecker says to him he's like what about you you got anything to add in he's like oh, no <laughs> riveting <laughs> stuff <Right>. eh? <laughs> He just he's just so ingrained that this movie's this movie like Happy Gilmore for golf, like this movie is quotable for baseball. You yeah. know, like yeah. where where you just say these things, you say quotes from this movie when you're playing baseball, like just a bit outside, just a bit outside. Uh, the ball four, ball eight, ball twelve, <laughs> <laughs> like like that kind of shit is just ingrained into baseball culture, and mm. it's and it's because of Bob Euchre, and I I think he's truly the best character in this movie. I agree, I agree with you. He's yeah. the least punchable face. The least <laughs> punchable face. Oh my god! So. He's the least, but yes, I'm Is off the train. Now? Like I am off. If I'm the getting train. off a train to not punch someone in the face, it's because of Bob Uecker <laughs> in this one. The the kind of understated characters of the movie though are the the diehard fans in the outfield oh, yes. on the reservation, yeah. <laughs> and like some of their conversations that they get into, like when when. Uh, Hayes uh, Haywood hits the home run. And he goes, "It's too high. It's too high," <laughs> and it goes and goes out there like too high and too high. <laughs> <laughs> too, it's too high. <laughs> I love those guys so much because I don't get. It. I don't. I just don't understand some of their banter, but it's hilarious. Should we me. do the wave? <laughs> the wave? <laughs> it's just us, <laughs> it's like three of them. <laughs> Wait, we don't do this. It's like here, I'll go up. <laughs> <laughs> There's no right for it. That will not start away. Yeah. <laughs> Look at those idiots. Are they exercising? <laughs> they uh, can't be. Calisthenics, man. You gotta you gotta get up, move around, Apple Watch this. So <laughs> <laughs> And one of them is just like somebody's grandma apparently that doesn't yeah. say anything that's knitting while she's out there. And if you yeah. notice that, it's just it's hilarious to me. Uh speaking of like the the fans and stuff, I love them cutting back to uh like the the regular people like in the bar or yep. like the the two the groundskeepers, uh, the two Asian American guys, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the groundskeepers, and uh, like the two workers, the workers. like oh they suck this year, the and then as they get better, like oh they're actually looking too pretty good. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's the actual real life of being a fan. Absolutely, of the sports yeah. team is going. Is that the preseason? Like we're going to do good this yep. year. We yep. suck. We suck. <laughs> well, These we guys. won two games. We're. I think we got a chance this year. <laughs> Never heard of any of these fucking guys. Oh, we got a new coach. It should be all right. You know. <laughs> oh dude i uh i i also what about um the party what party the party with the with uh that jake goes he oh. goes to like this is uh, what a what a weird thing and <laughs> he does this on the on the suggestion from willie willie hayes Mays, willie Mays hayes <laughs> um run, run, the, hit like Mays, run like hayes <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like yeah just follow her home I and mean, it, it's <laughs> it's a good idea. I guess he, yeah, <laughs> you know, I, it's a and good he had, idea. He had a sh- and he had a chance too because he like follows her, and then he goes, "Okay, she's on floor three, But he like thinks about it and goes, "I shouldn't do that." And then he went to the coffee shop, and he's like, "Gotta get." I'm, a, gonna, I'm gonna fucking do that. A little liquid courage <laughs> into him. And then he goes, That's got to be that, and he portrays that so well, yeah. Maringer, when he walks in and he like finds out, and it, you see it click in his head that he's in the wrong place. Yeah. Dude. And his face like really portrays that like oh fuck <laughs> yeah he's like whose place is this? What it's a very awkward on? scene and it's like those like th- those kinds of parties and movies obviously it's made to look like it's not a good time yeah it's just like yeah we're just gonna drink champagne in our uh, little uh, our, our little conversation and s- that we have sit and talk yeah 
talk zero about zero music. Talk about our <laughs> jobs and our finances and and our investments and everything. <coughs> and, yeah. what, and what the fuck group of people is this? This doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like who who how what is the relationship between these people? They're not like all friends. I I felt see that's like the thing too. They probably don't have friends. You're just like I think this is what normal people do is they talk in a room. If he's an attorney or something, I wonder if well Are they clients clients. That's weird if you're hanging out with attorney clients. I don't know. And then like, attorney client privilege. Yeah yeah you know anything said at this party. Yeah. <laughs> What's, what happens here stays here. <laughs> it's just a little attorney joke. Uh, more champagne. <laughs> more champagne. Can you get your beer? Uh, I just, I, it's so awkward. It and is. And then he's talking about, he's like, yeah, he's like, oh, you're a baseball player. Wow. He's like, yeah, I hear, I hear baseball players make like great money and everything. And you're like, yeah. Uh, he's like, you know, if you're good, you, you do. He's like, well, like, how, how good are you? He's like, I make the league, I make the league minimum. And he smiles about it, too. You know what the league minimum was back in 1989? I think I do. Can I give it a shot? Please. 63,000? Is it 63 or 68? 68. 68. Okay. I I didn't S- see the other lines. 60 <laughs> Yes. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't wearing my Felix Grays. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's collab. Uh, <laughs> uh Sorry. What's the inflation, AJ? Uh the inflation I believe is uh one it's almost it's over double it's like 140,000 mm. that is correct if you're talking about inflation however if you want to know what the league minimum is now though yeah like actual league minimum it's like 700,000 oh fuck and that's, that's a year that's a bummer that's an annual salary of 700,000 oh, that's too bad that's just to not, be the shittiest baseball just player just to be the worst the baseball it's player not, it's not podcasting money I can it, tell you. It, like even then though like you're still talking about think about $68,000 it, uh, the the buying equivalent of that. Yeah. In six, he's not poor. No. no. Uh, like he's not doing bad. I think like, I saw like the the same stat that uh, that was was like the minimum wage was like thirty three or, or a- average how average household income was like thirty something. Yeah. Thousand and it's year. just like you make double that. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. <laughs> Driving a shithole car, bro. Yeah. Like well, they cart. really they really like pour him down <laughs> like, you know what i mean they, they really try to make him seem like he's on tough times right now he's Are falling we, on tough times do we have a punchable face in this Hit it. if we were on a train to yes. go punch a face yeah. i'm on board <laughs> that's what i'm talking about hypothetically if i ever throw a party like this punch me in the face <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair cool. enough we're, we're on go Respect. ahead it's, 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 it's him, right? It's him. It, whatever his fucking stupid ass name is. Uh, his name's Gary or something. It's Gary. Yes. It's Gary. Uh, Gary the attorney. Um, punchable face for sure. An asshole. But, you know, it's, is, it, is it also like a, um, a Danny LaRusso effect? Do we have to humanize this? I, I was planning on humanizing this man. Okay. I, I do agree he is the most punchable face. Yeah. I'm not punching anybody else in this movie. But the thing about it is, is like, he... There's this 80s 90s movie thing that makes you root for the for the the like the good guys. The good, or so yeah. they like they're the good guys in the movie but they're actually the fucking shitty bad guys. <laughs> and they're and and they make terrible relationship decisions seem like true love. Yeah. I, I I'm actually I'm not going <laughs> to describe it here but I actually had a moment where like I got out of a relationship and I thought that it was probably okay to do these type of things okay. because I saw these in movies. Yeah. Just because I'm like well, I can get I can just get back. I can just like Screw that guy, you know, like yeah. so Jake Taylor treated Lynn like absolute shit many years ago, more right. than three years ago. He cheated on her, yep. didn't read her books, didn't read her books, right. had shown they had nothing in common. Did you hear that story she tells later about how like that she was throwing a surprise party for him and he never showed? Never and showed. He the was... person that did show was an attorney serving a, a paternity lawsuit to him in front mm. of all their friends. Like he was a fucking piece of shit. Now he sees her for the first time in a decade. She's actually happy. She decide he decides he wants her back. And even though she's engaged to be married, moving in with a guy, yeah. he stalks her, goes to her workplace, causes a scene, follows her home, trespasses to her her fiance's apartment, breaks into her apartment later, relentlessly pursues her, causing tension at home for our most punchable face. Yep. I mean, he deserves it, but at the same time, of course he's going to... There's going to be tension at home I now. would do the same thing. And he's going to be like, what the fuck's up with that guy? And they Let's, probably got in a huge fight that night. Yeah. No, you're right. He, it's pretty toxic fucking behavior, especially if you're trying to do a job yeah. where you're getting paid $68,000 a year <laughs> to do. Um, 
Uh, can we split the punches? Can we give can, like uh like the punch later on that happens between Charlie Sheen and um Dorn? Mar- Dor- yeah. Can we split? Can we do a punch to Tom Berenger's character? Okay. In that vein, where it's like a, a punch, but like, all right, we're even now. Stay away from her. Yes. How okay. About, how about one of you? One of you punches Guy. One of you punches Jake, and I'll punch Dorn. Okay. Is that okay? okay. Just, all at the same all time? Just like yeah. A, like a, a one, Mexican standoff. One, okay. two, two, three. Yeah. Go. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. We Do we feel happens. good about that? I feel we're great. <laughs> Violence rules. <laughs> <laughs> Violence rules. <laughs> Violence is a solution. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's not. The official <laughs> word from Confused Breakfast. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> All right, so moving along, despite their flaws, the team begins to improve, so Phelps decides to demoralize them further by removing luxuries. However, these changes do not affect the Indian's performance, and the team continues to win. Taylor continues to try to woo Lynn back, and they share a night together. I have a theory. I have a messed up theory in this. You know when he goes, uh, Harris is like, they're talking to Joe Boo versus Jesus Christ, and like he's like, you do not steal Joe Boo's rum. Would be very bad. Mm. Very, very bad. Then Harris steals Joe Boo's rum. Right. Told and, him not to. And then he gets hit with the bat. And so you're like, oh, see, it's bad. But then take away getting hit by the bat. They then win like their first game on screen that day. Oh, that's right. And then they go on a winning streak from there on out. Mm. He was just drunk that day because of that shot. Yes. And so, that's why I got hit by the bat. So Joe Boo has no power. Oh, no. Joe Boo has no power. No. I'm, I'm sorry to say to our voodoo friends, Joe Boo was not able to make this happen. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. As much as you want to believe in those kinds of things, you know, it's it's all about the power of the mind. You know what I'm saying? You can you can, you can can will in anything in this world, <laughs> just like this podcast was willed into existence. Mm. Okay. Are you trying to tell me Jesus Christ couldn't hit a curveball? Just Could save you? me from this. <laughs> no, you're <laughs> doing great. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I think, honestly... They won because they took that dude out of the game. Joe Boo? Uh, no, guy, guy, Harris. Harris. Oh, oh yeah, Harris. we'll get there. You know, <laughs> he got smoked in the dome. <laughs> yeah. And then, <laughs> and Actually, then good call. He, goes, he gets taken out. They have to go with Vaughn. And I think, is this when Vaughn got his glasses? I think Vaughn finally got his glasses. Yeah. And so. I never caught that as a child, uh, no. ever, this, this moment where he, he says, like, Ryan over there and. He kind of squints in the corner. Yeah. That that was very overly... It wasn't, like, very drawn out. It was yeah. just kind of like, oh, you need to wear glasses. I exactly. didn't get that he couldn't see over there, and then that's what made him wear glasses. Mm-hmm. It was weird. Right. It, well, he was... And he's, like, about to cut him, and then he he gets... I guess... Hey, I guess that's what coaches are for, right? They're supposed to notice these things? Yeah. I guess I'll just I noticed that you that. squinted. Oh, you squinted a bit there. Hmm. <laughs> I think uh, hmm. it's like okay. What are you about a plus seven twenty five? Yeah. <laughs> what's what's your uh, what's your lens oh, man. ratio there? Yeah, I'm a minus four. Oh, nice. Uh, I don't. I I think I'm up there. I think I'm or down there. Whatever you want to say. <laughs> These things get thick. All right. Uh, I gotta have special lenses. You're beautiful. Thanks. You're beautiful, age. <laughs> There, there is a weird moment again here too, where like the baseball season's so agonizingly long. Yeah, it is just so stupid how many games <laughs> baseball plays. But like, th- all they're showing are these crushing defeats of of how bad this team is. Mm-hmm. And then at one point, somebody's like, "There, we're fifteen and twenty four. You're like, you won fifteen games. That's pretty decent. Like, I mean, it's I, decent. Like, I can't believe... From what I've seen on screen, you should be winning zero games. Yeah, yeah exactly. And you won 15 games? Yeah. Like, they could have at least gone to single digits to make it seem more dire. Yes. You yeah. know? I, I think that would have been a little bit more reasonable. But what is that? What did they say? 100 and 162 some? games 162 games. And there's 62 in an NHL season, right? There's 88. 82. 82. 82, 82. Yeah, right. 82 in NBA, 82 in NHL. 16 in the NFL. Yeah. 162 in Major League Baseball. Good Lord. And that's the thing. I'll never give baseball players any crap. Like, again, like, it's like, well, they just stand around. <laughs> that's all they do. Yeah, while they're standing there, they're away from their newborn babies. <laughs> yeah. Very true. 162 days of the fucking year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, and again, going on to like all their equipment's falling apart at this point <laughs> and like, I like it when Rachel walks in and he's just he's, he says Lou Lou just says like 
I'm too I'm too old to go diving into lockers, and there are no <laughs> more towels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's just standing there, just buck right in front of her, yep. just hanging hanging brain, hanging dog. Just, just I feel like as soon as he gets home, he's meat just potatoes. like that. You know? Yeah, like he's like, if I didn't have to wear clothes, I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think Lou Brown has a mustache above his cock yes. too? Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> kind of like kind of like the hair the the. the uh, uh, John Candy, Wayne's <laughs> <laughs> well, Trains and Automobiles. Well, like with a, if he's got a mustache, is it is it is it above <laughs> or is it below, like on his thighs? You know what I mean? No, I think it's above. Ab- it has to be above. I think it's because it's, yeah. <laughs> so if he does like a handstand, then <laughs> it's, it's above. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. If you look, if you're looking at it, if you're looking at it, it could be either be a mustache or a very excited. Thing you got yeah. going on down there, <laughs> yeah. cock stash. A lot of times I say things and then I immediately regret it because I remember <laughs> that our friend Joey uh, is like six and listens to uh, our show. No. I'm like, no, Joey. Uh, Joey. But hey, at least we got Jaws coming up here, buddy. <laughs> it's Jaws it's is coming right. up. You asked for There's it. There's no profanity in that episode. <laughs> no, nope, no. we'll do zero profanity. Actually, could we try that? No, not a chance. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you you signed up for this. Um, <laughs> you signed. Up. You paid to listen to our podcast. Yeah, you paid Spotify. <laughs> Uh, so she's just in there sexually harassing her players, like nonchalant, willy nilly. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. I guess she owns them. Uh, she's in in her mind, I guess. Well, sexual harassment can't go that way. So. Oh, that's right. Yeah. that's right. That's right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about you that. Can't, you can't, I'm not even. Gonna say <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say if I had finished this shot right here, I would have said what <laughs> I was gonna say. Exhibit blank check. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Blank check. See, there we go. We've got it's proofs. Proofs in the pudding. Well, and then it continues. It continues that this that shitty eighties nineties like yeah. trope that I'm telling you about is like Jake Taylor just shows up. And he drives that fucking <laughs> golf cart. Or wait, did he drive the golf cart? Yeah, this is when he actually drives. Yeah, this one right? drove it to her apartment. He actually drives the the bullpen cart to her apartment and just breaks into her apartment. Yeah, and then yeah. just like forces himself pretty much upon her. He's just. He just says he's insisting that this is a thing that's going to happen. And he's like, I'll come to your wedding. Right. Tell me what the date is. I'll come to it. Right. That's what they're talking about. It was about. a very, very messed up conversation situation. Uh, but it, she just fucks him, right? <laughs> <laughs> they don't show it. For an R-rated movie, that's kind of interesting, don't you think? Yeah. And yeah, they didn't I'm... at least like do like, take my breath away. <laughs> very blue. <laughs> yeah, why didn't they do lighting. that? No silhouettes. Yeah. You know? Just uh, pure flesh on flesh. Just uh, There was, a, I think, a dress that dropped or something like that, yeah, and that yep. was about and it. And he's still wearing cleats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dirty cleats in her clean apartment. Yeah. Um, As she's trying to clean up her place. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> very trying to move out of an apartment before? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Jeez. She's Come not on. getting her deposit back. Nope. No. <laughs> Scratching up the wood. The HOA, the HOA is like, you can't park uh, bullpen uh, <laughs> carts out front. With that ain't legal. Like that's not street <laughs> legal. <laughs> Things not street legal. She, he's getting like a ticket Are written at the time. Now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he can hear, he can hear it up there. He's just like, yeah, well, you're getting a fucking ticket today. <laughs> I, 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 you clearly read I'm the rules. Of this shit. <laughs> you read the rules. No <laughs> fucking baseball cleats on the upstairs yeah, unit. Literally, okay. the fifth Andrew time double tonight. parked. Fuck this guy. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's half part. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, no, it's it's weird. I it's it's uh, we've talked about it. It's uh, yeah, it's fucked up. It's just weird that that I, we talk about this a lot. That that it the power of movies of you developing a relationship with a protagonist in a mm-hmm. movie, yeah. and then just being full on board with what's going on. Yeah, no, it's it's their story, and they are the hero of their story. You so can, you can that's be it. A, yeah. You know, you can be a homewrecker if you're an underdog, right? If you're That's what it is. <laughs> okay, but hold on. Pretend that there was a movie. Pretend that this was somehow some like drama movie about like a court case, and that this this guy we still don't even know this guy is <laughs> Gary. 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 Okay. Gary attorney, attorney Gary. Let's say that he was like this like guy that was trying to win this case, and it was like just consuming yeah. his life. And then they go to his home life, and he's got this beautiful bride to be, fiance. And then all of a sudden, like they show it from his perspective of this baseball player showing up. And like hitting on his girlfriend in front of everybody. According to him, a washed out, a washout. Uh, like yeah. a, he's washed up, has been baseball player who's come back for a season. Yes. You know? Yeah. Like, you would immediately, it would be completely flip flop because mm-hmm. you've already developed feelings for Gary. It's right. 
We've all, we got feelings for Gary. Yeah. <laughs> you like Gary? That's Gary. how that's how attorneys like they come and see their wives with another man or something like that, and they uh, purposely lose their cases because they're just so distraught and pissed off. That's what's gonna happen to Gary. It's basically Gary's gonna be okay. So so <laughs> Gary's Gary's gonna be just fine. He's Cause, an attorney because you know damn well that Lynn is not gonna stick around for much longer. Yeah, this is not gonna go well for their yeah. relationship. Yeah. He he probably he probably works with uh, Gordon Bombay anyways. <laughs> like has a great working relationship. Greed and they just get is good. Greed is good. I don't know. Is it weird that we're talking so much about the relationship? We of can Lynn move on. You want to move on? <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. I'm having a good time. <laughs> So fed up with Rachel, Donovan reveals her plan to Brown, who then relays the same news to the players. With nothing to lose, the team agrees to get back at Phelps by winning the pennant. The team plays very well down the stretch of the season and force a one-game playoff with the division's co-leaders, the Yankees. The Yankees. The Yankees. Prior to the playoff, Vaughn learns that he will not be the starting pitcher for the game and goes to the bar to mope where he is seduced by Doran's wife. Sean. Hello. Did you recognize Charles Cipher? Yes, I did. I, th- Sean, you know how much I love the movie that I'm going to mention, and yet I never put two and two together. Yes, sir. That that Charles Cyphers, who plays Charlie Donovan in okay. the movie, is Bracket in Halloween. Sheriff in Bracket. The, I just like it was a mind blowing moment to me to, re- and then it's of like, of course, that's the same guy. Yeah. I just don't know why I never put two and two together. It's weird. It's because it's '89. He's a little older. He, yeah. He's kind of like a little thicker in this movie, I think. Um. I, but he's also in The Fog, another John Carpenter movie where he's great in. He's like the the weather guy in that movie. It's always cool to see him. I, I don't know what it is about him that I like. <laughs> I know. I think it's just because he's in Halloween and worked with Carpenter. Everyone's entitled to one good scare. There you go. <laughs> God damn, we're gonna that, we're gonna be friends. Come come to Halloween. We're we're, we're doing that. Movie. One of these days, me and Sean are gonna be friends. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, we're working on it. It's Could it be today? <laughs> it's, it be. it's fun to watch it develop. We haven't know? recorded in a long time, and I, I feel pretty giddy. So I'm crying. I've been wiping away tears <laughs> the whole night. The, you always something got, about you. Something about your your fatherly ways now is making me like you. I, a little I bit have more. dad strength now. It's <laughs> yeah. pretty awesome. Like the other day, I just like Molly's like, I can't open this pickle jar, and I just barely touched it. And yeah. It just went yeah. and just opened. And you cracked the jar. I have dad strength, Jeez, dude. Sure. Fuck it. The one thing wow. that has not come in yet, I've t- I've been told it takes a little uh, different for different dads is mm. the dad jokes. Ah, uh, okay, that yeah, has yeah. not come in yet. Oh. Well, we do do a podcast, so I, I don't know what our policy is against that, but we should make one probably. We probably not doing dad again. jokes. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we're gonna yeah. be fucked. Okay, AJ, you go ahead and move on. <laughs> okay, tell us what you want to <laughs> talk about. You do something, <laughs> AJ. Your turn. Um, <laughs> you guys, you guys <laughs> suck. Uh, <laughs> Our rhythm's off. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, so, okay, I have something. <laughs> I can say this. Um, so, she's trying to, like, sabotage this team at every moment and everything. Like, she's, uh, like, they, they're getting good. And so, she's trying to think of ways to fuck, fuck this momentum up. And I'm thinking, like, they're, they have that shitty plane. What's to stop her to just plant a bomb in that plane? <laughs> Dude. And just fucking kill the whole Jesus. team. Dude. Uh, are you getting on that plane? Are you guys getting on that plane? I guess I gotta, right? You have to. There's something in me where I'm like, fuck it. Yeah, I would. Like, especially if it was like my passion, like if we were touring on a for our podcast or touring for like a band, yeah. like, I don't care what it is. I'm invincible right now. If our producer, Alicia, was like trying to sabotage us so that <laughs> right. AJ didn't have to do a podcast anymore and she got us that plane, <laughs> yeah. then I'd be like, I think I think I still gotta get on this plane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I still yeah. gotta. <laughs> Producer Jeremy is now producer Alicia for one show. For only. one show. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I could get on that play, dudes. Like that's that thing. It, if you're telling me that I got to get on a plane that that's that is that big with a propeller still, uh, <laughs> that dude, they're duct taping. That they're, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dude, I just don't know, man. I'm sorry. Well, listen, AJ, have you ever flown Spirit Airlines? Uh, no, I've flown Frontier. Okay, so like, if you've flown Frontier or Spirit or like, you know, yeah. Allegiant, you're good. You're, it's the you're, same thing. You're fine, man. <laughs> it's the same thing. You know, statistics are still on your side, technically. <laughs> All right, they're still on your side. I think you'll be okay. I think I'm a better driver than I am an airplane passenger. Yeah. 
I would like to imagine. Y- you you can drive an airplane? Airplane passenger. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if we uh, if we all do take our little trip to California like we may be doing yeah. here soon, are you going to be okay? You're just going to have to get pretty drunk on that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll be all right. Do you guys drink on planes? Oh, yeah. Have we have to. Oh, do you drink before you get on the plane? Yes. Do you drink when you're on the plane? Yes. Okay. I have a girlfriend. Who's I, d- pretty, I do it before. I have a girlfriend who's pretty nihilistic about being on planes. Like whenever there's turbulence, she she like puts her hands up and she's like, "Woo!" I'm like, "Fuck, <laughs> do you?" <laughs> this this Bring podcast her down. is off the rails. It is. It is. <laughs> We're good. Okay, so you always have to hit in this type of movie, and it still works for me. You have to hit the montage of getting better. Yep. And montage. like, I I I still think like, what what else would you do if you're a filmmaker? You're remaking this movie. How do you show them getting better over over a forty game span than just fucking montage? Gotta have a montage. And yeah. this score is pretty cool. Yeah, I kind of like the score to this movie. It's James like, Newton Howard, man, is that yeah? He's a legend. Yeah, yeah. Does a, does a lot of the uh, oh my god uh, M Night Shyamalan movies like cool. the good ones like Sign right. Six Sense and stuff like ah, that. Ah, yeah. Isn't there a new M Night Shyamalan? There's a. It's called Old. I don't know if that's the one you're referring I to. Don't, know. don't watch it. <laughs> don't watch it. <laughs> All right, so like <laughs> I think M Night's got about fifty fifty now. <laughs> <It needs a laughs> he may M. have dipped slightly below, <laughs> but hey. I still think the Village is great. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what's oh, the worst? We haven't recorded in a long time, you guys. We are happy to be together. That's really <laughs> what's the going on. Very, podcast it's, ever. It's very true. Like every time I have like a talking point, and then like you <laughs> want somebody what's like the deal with baseball sidetracks <laughs> like so hard. And I'm just like, all AJ, you need, Sean, shut up. Go all ahead, you need AJ. is, I'm going to mute our mics. Go ahead, AJ. Yes. Okay. All you need if, for this montage is a lot of strikes, like a lot of like, <laughs> and then Bob Euchre saying, strike one, strike two, strike three, you know, that kind of thing. And, and then a lot of catcher catching. That's all you need. So it's very fast cut and a lot of Bob Euchre and a lot of catching balls. <laughs> and that's it. That's your montage, right? All right, Mike's yes. back on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree. Yes, the, I did notice something funny this time around. So uh, Willie Mays Hayes says he's gonna he's got a pair of those black gloves for every base he steals, and they they say they got like roughly forty games left when they go on this run. They got to win like thirty two out of forty or something. Right. And uh, he they show him tacking gloves on his wall. Mm. I counted it. I paused. Did you really? He's got sixteen pairs of gloves that he basically got through. 120 games this year, he stole 16 bases. Okay. Then, later on, we're assuming it isn't even to the final game yet, so it's roughly 30 to 40 games later. Right. I paused it again. He has 90 gloves. So that's uh, an average of two stolen bases per game. And you're thinking, oh, that's not too hard. But in reality, like, getting on base one out of four times in a game is, like, a good thing. Yeah. yeah. So that means he was on base at least twice a game and stealing a base at least every time he was on base. Just for record, the record for most stolen bases in a season, 162 games, How many? what do you think it is? The record for stolen bases. In one season. There's 162 games in a season. Um, oh, man. I'm going to guess 28. <laughs> AJ, I, you got a better guess I, than that. Because <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> 138 stolen bases in a season. Whoa. Is the record. So if he had kept at this this pace, which we're assuming he was at, was two stolen bases a game, yeah, yeah. that would have been 324 in a season. Jeez. So like he was clearly on fire at yeah. this point. Mm-hmm. Almost unbelievably good at stealing bases at that point. Yeah. But to to his that credit, that real stat is unbelievable. Yeah, to his credit, the he looked unbelievably fast when we were in spring training there. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I guess he really wasn't. No. <laughs> Did you read that? Well, like he couldn't throw at all. He couldn't throw. He, he, he couldn't, couldn't do anything baseball wise at all. He the reason it was in slow mo is to make it look like he was but, going fast. But even that, like, I feel like even in slow motion, you, these other two guys look way slower. Than yeah, them. yeah, <laughs> true. And I, he had a good like. He was running, and I, I, I believed it. Yeah, Is that completely. a testament to Wesley Snipes' acting? It's like he's not even actually going fast, but he looks very he's determined at going <laughs> fast. He's acting. How, he's, That's true. He's yeah. like, his face was determined. Yeah. Like he's, he, actually, he's running. I mean, running sucks. Yeah. So. And <laughs> <laughs> running does suck. And uh, But he does. He looks very good. And I just imagine if this wasn't in slow motion and like you're watching this being filmed, it's like, this is not working. 
How are we going to fix this? What are we going to do? Just put it in slow-mo. Oh. <laughs> just put it in slow-mo. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll got just, it. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> speaking, speaking of acting, we've talked about... I think we just talked about this in Happy Gilmore, where I it's, it's mind-blowing to me when an actor who all they're trying to do is act like they're a real person, yeah. but then to, to have them have this actor who's acting like they're a character act. Yeah. So they do that the commercial, commercial, the American yes. Express yes. commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're all so bad. <laughs> but like Dorn <laughs> is the worst. Yeah. And, and he does he does these snaps his fingers. He goes. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, I don't know how you do that. Yeah. You know, like how, it's, it's like playing drums if you're the best drummer in the world, but like pretending like you're bad. Yeah. Or pretending like yeah. you're bad at guitar, or, or singing the wrong notes as a singer. Like, how do you do that? No, you're right. It is a feat, and like I, I say many times in this show, it's like it's harder to make a bad movie than it is to make a good one. You know, and and in that with like uh, these, what you're saying, these actors playing these <laughs> characters who are acting in a thing, <laughs> is another level. You know, like you just you kind of have to turn on that like thing in your brain and that's got to be kind of difficult. It's depth, man. It's yeah. another layer to a character and just doing that job. Don't <laughs> steal home without it. And then we'll steal your home back <laughs> if you don't pay us. <laughs> what, what's the newest uh, Tarantino film? Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The, I, I'm sorry to bring this up because I mean we're, we've been off the rails since the beginning here but uh, we're fun. Leo DiCaprio when he's acting in that movie is like the best shit I've ever seen in my life. It's yeah. just watching a person act like they're an actor who's acting yeah. is mind blowing. It's his best performance and it's a shame he didn't win for that. Yeah. It's unreal funny. Yeah. He's so good in that. <laughs> but anyway, no, you're right. That is a thing though. It's it's like you have to it's a mental thing, I think, because you're like trying to play portray this character, but then this character has to play a character. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Very meta. Yeah. Very meta. Yeah. yeah. I'm not talking about you, Facebook. Yeah, you Facebookers. Fuckers. Get out of okay, here. Okay, so are we at this, uh, the cheating thing with Sheen? It's, it's here right now, Okay, man. so uh, she tries to sabotage. Uh, I imagine she tried to put a bomb on the plane, like I said. She mm -hmm. just gets this girl with syphilis, I imagine, to try and fuck their star pitcher, who's up and coming. And that's that's where I think she's trying to actually fold them again. Wait, excuse me? Yes. Wait, wait, wait. What? I, did you... Are you? She um, she injects this girl with syphilis, like just just like nonchalant. Okay. And then like she realizes there's an attraction there, and she gets her to go and and try and make love. Should I say that instead? Is yes. that what's bothering no, you? No, guys? no. We're just wondering where you're going. With yeah. This. So <laughs> she gets her to do that. So she tries to give Charlie Sheen's character uh, syphilis. Uh, I think I think <laughs> I, I can't decide if Sean's now putting on a clinic of acting. Yes. If he's acting like a podcaster right, right. now. Right. Or <laughs> if he doesn't have a clue about what happened in the movie. So, Sean, <laughs> just yes. break, break, your, <laughs> break your wall down, Sean. Are you serious about what you just said? <laughs> I mean, it is a joke, <laughs> but <laughs> you guys could just take my jokes we're, we're every now and again. <laughs> Sean, we don't know. Go on, guys. You're right. so good at being Go on, guys. We're having fun. Just go with it. <laughs> Sean, you're sometimes too good, okay? Thanks, man. It's like Jeez, a pre funeral home all over again. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> anyway. So that's weird. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the movie now. All right. Uh, <laughs> this is why you got to watch it sometimes on YouTube because we cry a lot. Yep. We're uh, all sweating our asses off too. Yeah. What's wrong with this? Why is it warm in here? Uh, it's whiskey. Uh, no, I, I actually, I feel like so bad for Charlie Sheen in this, or like for he truly for, didn't for know. Vaughn. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I feel very bad for him, and obviously for his Doran's wife too. Because, uh, but then, and then I'm like, now I don't. Because, well, but she it's took just the like, power in her hand. Like I, I'm, I'm way, I'm way into her move too. I'm I mean, like, hey, she did, yeah. she did what she was. Yeah, she's like, she saw it on TV. <laughs> she's like, like, cool, bro. That's true. That's true. Who you is know? the person that that would that I could sleep with that would most fuck up my husband? And and Vaughn, yeah, yeah, wild thing. Vaughn, wild thing. And, and I put that red dress on finally. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think uh, uh, again, uh, Dorn, Dorn to me is is. Like I said earlier, super punchable. He's in the solarium. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you have a solarium, the in solarium, your house, you should be punched in the face. Ooh. Solarium. <laughs> he's like, he's 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 so pretentious. He's 
awful to talk to. Like, I hate all the conversations that happen with him up until maybe the very end. Yeah. But you are just, you want to hit him in the face. Like, oh, I had something I wanted to talk to you about. You know, I didn't want to do it in front of the other guys. We have money problems. I got a great financial guy I hook you up with. N- no. <laughs> no. What the hell are you talking? Shut up. Yeah. Okay. That's all that needs to happen. And then, again, amazing. I'll, I'll, I'll cut your fucking throat or whatever he says. Yeah, yeah, Tom yeah, Berenger. That's off and put something down your fucking throat. I love that scene. Throat. It is intense. Yeah. Like, I'm like, Tom Berenger. Ooh. Coffee? Coffee? <laughs> <laughs> that Dude. was probably an awkward conversation after he left. Yeah, I know. It's like, why is he so upset? <laughs> Thinking about the aftermath. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh god it is that is very fun to do thinking about the aftermath it's like well i guess he didn't want any coffee it's like why is he upset or what'd you do you know it's like oh man i'm gonna go get injected with syphilis yeah <laughs> sean's killing it scene five <laughs> here we go so during the playoff game harris keeps the indians in the game until vaughn is brought in to finish it out Taylor bunts the ball in the bottom of the ninth to score Haynes and win the game. The team and fans celebrate. Lynn reveals she is no longer engaged and her and Jake embrace. Lovely. Uh, Lovely things. uh, So the actor that plays Harris is 47 years old. Yeah. He looks terrible in this game. (laughs) Like He's just lobbing balls over the plate with his vag. His vagisil's not working. Yeah. His fucking snot balls. snot balls are not working. He, I, I don't understand how he was the pitcher to do Dude, this. Like, I know we never see any other pitchers. Yeah. But, like, how was he not the guy? How yeah. is he the guy? I was trying to, like, thinking back, and, again, it's a coach's do- job to be strategic, and we don't want to burn Vaughn out maybe. But I guess, I mean, didn't He's he? Had, he has he, a terrible he, record against the Yankees. Vaughn and did. yeah, he does have the bad record against the Yankees. But at the same time, he's also, hasn't he? He's pitched entire games, hasn't he? he yeah, pitched, well, he I, pitched yeah. that whole game. Apparently, he's one of the starters, is what I gather from this movie. Okay. It's Harris, Vaughn, and then probably a couple other guys that we never meet. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, you see a, you see a very lingering shot of a guy who got cut earlier in the movie, and you're like, do I know that guy? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and then we never see him again. He's like he like opens his locker, <sighs> closes it back up, turns around and leans against like, <sighs> and then we never see him again. That's it's enough like, of him. It's like did we did we meet this guy before? <laughs> we never met. <laughs> it's him. fine. Nope. Uh, <laughs> but uh, again, all the yeah, you've got two pitchers basically. So I guess he just wants Vaughn to be the relief pitcher, which it kind of wasn't a big thing before this, right? I, I read like I read that like wild thing and the whole we're gonna bring him in to kind of finish up the game. No, that was they still, started doing all that a lot more the, the after wa- this the movie. The walk-in music was the a walk-in thing. music. Yeah, so okay. like cl- closers coming from the bullpen was yeah, always a. It thing. was a thing. It was but, always a thing. But but this was one of the first movies that like played a song when a closer came in to close the game. Yeah, and now that's a thing. Like like walk-in music or walk-up music it's or kind of badass. Yeah, it, it's super. <laughs> it and I love that. Like that's an iconic scene. The wild yeah. thing. And she, I hate this. Fucking song. <laughs> like, okay, so me too, because I hate wild things. I but was, whatever. I, I'm like during this movie, I'm like, I think she's always got something up her sleeve. When Serrano hits that that two run hit or whatever, I'm like, one of those bases, because like they focus on the bases every time he hits like a foot on the base. I'm like, one of those bases is gonna have a landmine. It's gonna that's explode. Gonna, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like, she's some, I'm giving her way more credit. She's going like, <laughs> she's <laughs> petting a, a Persian cat. <laughs> <laughs> She's got like a little detonator, like ready to go. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but hey, that's a weird thing for me. Is like she, Rachel Phelps, should be ecstatic at this point, right? Yeah. Because like she's actually got a team that has started to generate revenue. She's she's now going to win a a playoff game that's going to send her into a seven game series with home game revenue like mm-hmm. you hear like we're, we're coming off fresh off an nhl season where the the act of going from round one to round two is like a multi-million dollar benefit to an organization mm-hmm. yeah of just getting a couple extra home games and she's got a team that literally costs nothing 
and they have shitty equipment. They, they, they have been flying on a shitty plane and buses the whole time. She should be mind blown at how awesome this is and yeah. how much she's making money. Yeah, she's not only making a shit ton, she's also saving a ton because she hasn't bought anything. And, and yeah, even if they lose this game, yeah. they still beat the attendance record. Yeah. So they're not moving. So at this point, she might as well move forward. Yeah. In fact, they said in the original ending, Rachel Phelps admits before the final game that her bitchy persona was an all like was an act to fire up the players. And she said, had they not had a good season, the team might have gone bankrupt. And audiences were like, fuck that. Yeah. But that's a real world scenario. Yeah, to test me. audiences were like, no, we, we we built up this whole time hating her. And we, yeah. we still want to hate we her. We want to continue to hate her. Yeah. I but at this see. point, she can be like, I was wrong. Thank you for making me money, Cleveland Indian yeah. players. Thank you. I, I, <laughs> I love, I love, shut up, Donovan. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> blowing raspberries it's just like it's just like yeah it's like fuck you guys. evil has come to Don't. little town chair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i love that so much you're right though i it, it's it's like it's frustrating at that point that she she's still sitting up in that like miami themed box yeah just <laughs> just hating life for some yeah. odd reason i i actually i think i would have liked the original ending ending i don't know about you guys it's really? more of a real world ending yeah Rather than her just being upset, mm. yeah, which doesn't, yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, speaking of like cut scenes and stuff, there was a uncredited. They shot scenes with Jeremy Piven. What who was supposed to be in this movie? He was supposed to be just like kind of a, a bench warmer who like said profanities the entire time <laughs> on the bench. <laughs> I would love that, right? <laughs> it's like, the, but they, they I love shot Jeremy it, Piven. It, they shot it and they cut it out, and I, it, no, I don't know where it is or anything. <laughs> That sucks. It, it, like uh, Jeremy Piven is one of those guys I will watch in anything. Yeah. Okay. Like, r- like what was it? Rush Hour Two, and he's like, he's like the boutique owner. He's just no like, one's seen Rush Hour Two, dude. Uh, come on, go on. He's going to make you the bell of the ball. He's like buttercream, buttercream, croc skin, buttercream. <laughs> just like, dude. Is that Jeremy he goes Piven? all in. Oh yeah, it's Jeremy Piven. Of course. It is. <laughs> uh, I wish. They oh, I'm thinking had of Beverly that Hills in. Cop. Yeah. He could play like the. Uh, Another actor plays a similar kind of character. Okay, sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I think I, I still don't think that she should have come back, <laughs> Lynn. I don't, I don't think she should have come back around. Just to let you know, here's my left hand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there Love it is. You. I'm pregnant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, like what? Like oh man, I yeah. don't know, man. It's a little weird. I I do think this ending is really exciting though. It is like, so good, especially like with the the closer music, the wild thing, and everything. And the score. <laughs> it is it is like very exciting and made like a baseball. It 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 as it being a comedy, it is also an exciting sports movie yeah. at the same time, and that's kind of what good movies like this do. And uh, yeah. I really like that about it. So for sure. So I got a I got a Pepper Joe's hot take on this Ooh. one here. In fact, uh, let's play this. Music. Hey guys. Let's play. Hit it. If we- <laughs> boys, 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 boys. It's time for your Pepper Joe's hot take. All right. Okay, so here is my hot take. Hit it. Despite beating one of the best teams in Major League in a playoff to win the pennant, the Cleveland Indians went on to get swept in four straight games of the first round of the playoff right after that. Okay. Jake Taylor is hurt. He blew out his knee on that idiotic, stupid bunt to win the game. He's yeah. off to make babies. He's checked out. He's with his new girlfriend who will very soon regret breaking up off her <laughs> engagement with her uh, attorney friend. Greg. Hey, Greg. Gary. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> Har- Harris is throwing straight cheeseburgers in that playoff, like literally 40-mile-an-hour yeah. pitches. Yeah. There is no way that he's going to recover in time to pitch any one of these games. There's not enough Vagisil in the world nope. to let him start another game in the playoffs against an amazing team. He was obviously the best pitcher, pitcher that they have mm-hmm. because literally they could have gone with Vaughn or anyone else, and they said, we got to go with Harris in our most important game of the season. Right. So there's no chance in, in the world Harris is going to win another game in that playoff season. Vaughn went out that night, partied hard. The entire, in, the entire town of Cleveland gave him whatever he wanted that night. He partied way too hard, ended up sleeping with the police chief's wife. He was thrown <laughs> into jail and missed the entire rest of the playoffs. Serrano couldn't hit shit 
until he cursed Joe Boo for the home run in the playoff game. Unfortunately, Joe Boo was drunk on rum that night. When he comes <laughs> to and he realizes that Serrano ditched him, yeah. he places a mega curse on Serrano <laughs> that prevents him from ever hitting another ball ever again. Serrano is forced to become a spokesman for an insurance company. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance in hell that the Indians will win another game after this playoff. Ugh. Way too much of a high. They're gonna they're gonna get swept. <clears throat> yep. That's hot. That's yep. a hot take. That is hot. Dorn became an interior decorator. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's not a big deal. It is. <laughs> Well, you got anything else you want to talk about on this one? That's it, man. So we have turned away all the nostalgia we've brought to a modern eye. We reviewed this movie. We want to know what our rating system is here for this modern eye. AJ, what do you got on this one? I I really enjoyed watching this movie again. Um, like it's not it's not oh I'm going to seek this movie out like some of the comedies we've been doing lately. Um, like e- e- the past couple have just been bangers for me, you know, but. But this is it was such a fun movie to watch. And like, I don't know why I appreciated it so much. Again, it's it's definitely more adult humor rather than like, you know, the stuff of like Happy Gilmore, Mm -hmm. Wayne's World even. Uh, But it is it's like way more like mature, like humor. And uh, I for some reason really, really enjoyed watching it. But that being said, I'm not going to I can't I can't say it's like up there, you know, so. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna settle this one in at a, a seven point one. Seven point one for the yeah. age, Sean. What do you got, man? That's a good point you bring up where it's a very adult humor. We don't really get that much yeah. anymore. And like even even with uh Wayne's World and uh, Happy Gilmore, it's like really not that adult. It's pretty silly. And so I do appreciate these kinds of movies where we don't really get them that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that that being said, I, I probably won't go back and visit it as much as those movies for some reason. Um, but I do I do really like it. I like it as a sports movie. I like it as a comedy. And uh, I like the characters a lot. Uh, I'm going to go 6.9. 6.9-er. You know, I, I think that this is still a great movie. I watched it multiple times. I think it it's it's awesome. I think it's one of the better sports movies out there. But I do not think it's near the the top of sports movies uh not even baseball movies to tell you the truth um so you can't give it too big of a score but it is it's still a great movie and it's still yeah a, a mega cultural thing that i think needs to be loved and explored so i'm i'm like a 6.85 i think so that gives us a a modern day rating combined of 6.95 which will take us to just below the burbs, just ab- above Cool Runnings. Okay. It's okay. kind of right in that realm right there for a rating. Okay. How do you feel about that? Really? Uh, you, you said think, above Cool Runnings? Just above Cool Runnings, just below the burbs. Huh. I like it. I like it below the burbs. We gave the burbs our collective. What was that? Our collective burbs was 6.98. This was 6.95. What the hell's wrong with us? I I think I I think I would watch how yeah, Rick to come in. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if Rick to come in was in this, it'd be I oh like know, a seven point. If he was like an assistant coach, oh, oh my god, god. Like oh an my athletic god, athletic trainer. Yeah. What if he was bracket? What if he was like uh, yeah yeah that that's a good one. Yeah. Charles Cyphers. Yeah, yeah, that'd oh, be awesome, man. Well, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for being here. Tune in next Wednesday for another great episode. We are gonna hit top five movie soundtracks. Oh, I'm so excited. It's gonna, it's a tough one. I have a list of like thirty that I yeah. have to somehow bring down to five. It's not. It's gonna be tough. You have to look through your vinyl collection. <laughs> <Gotcha>. <laughs> and we're gonna follow that up with a movie selected directly by one of our executive producers, Reservoir Dogs. Ooh. <sighs> look at that, right, baby! Look at that Boom, baby! Right there. Let's get to work. And if you're new to the podcast, go back this time last year. Fitting, The Sandlot. Baseball movie. Hey, this time hey. last year. It's, it's just baseball time of year. How about that timing? I think mm-hmm. that's a great episode. Please go listen to that if you haven't. I think it's uh, a very good episode. Cleanse your palate from this one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, figure our ratings from that to this. And, yeah. uh, Would you like to know what the Sandlot was? The I mean, Sandlot was, wow, uh, 8.66. That is our seventh highest rated. Yep. Makes sense. Deservedly so. Masterpiece. So. Yeah. And we so. also have a voicemail. You know you can call us at 319-804-9590. Six. Let's hear today's voicemail. Hey guys, my name is Anthony Natoli, and I just want to say this is the podcast that got me through the pandemic. My wife turned me on to it. She's been listening to it 
every morning for about a year. And uh, you guys are great. I love the one with Happy Gilmore. It's got to be a 10 out of 10 for me. Um, it just makes me feel happy and good. All the good Adam Sandler movies rank up there with me. But you guys are awesome, and I really appreciate all the hard work you guys put into it and can't wait to hear what's next. Keep it going. Thanks, man. Anthony. You are too kind, Anthony. Man. Glad to be there for you, so man. So glad, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. Happy Gilmore obviously is a comfort movie for me. So mm. I, during the pandemic, I watched it a couple times for sure. I'm glad it makes you feel happy. Yeah. Just like yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Go to a happy place. Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Please stay in touch with us by following on all of our social media platforms at Confused Breakfast on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and Confused Be Fast on Twitter. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast and leave a review on the podcast platform of your choice right now. Also, we have merch. You know you want to rep the Confused Breakfast in public. Mugs, stickers, shirts, all kinds of goodies. Go to ConfusedBreakfast.com for a direct link. And don't forget about our voicemail number, 319-804-9596. Links to everything you could ever need from us are in the show notes or at ConfusedBreakfast.com. This includes a way to follow all of us individually in our personal projects that we want you to check out. Mission of the day, tell your friends about us. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye-bye.